Hello and welcome to the dungeon. I'm your host Rob. In today's video we're going to be revisiting a build that I wanted to do before earlier which was the Barbarian Warlock as you probably noticed from the title. And the reason I wanted to revisit it is because I actually just played it recently in a campaign and I just wanted to kind of talk about it and give some of my general thoughts on it and my experiences with it. And uh, it's not going to be a really long video because I've kind of covered this particular mix already. But that was more from a theory crafting point of view. This one's more from an actually played point of view. And so I did want to kind of touch on it. So I only took two levels of Barbarian. I started with Barbarian because we were starting level one. If I started later, I might have started Warlock. Um, not getting extra attack until level seven uh, does kind of suck. Let me just tell you. But overall, I thought it performed extremely well. One of the nice things was that because I had spells, I was able to, you know, actually contribute out of combat. And I find that this is something barbarians sometimes really struggle at. They're great in a fight, but everything else, they, you know, are kind of struggling for ways to contribute in a lot of cases. But because I had some good utility spells like fly and stuff, I felt like I was still able to do quite a bit of that. I probably should have gone even more in. I did think, like... Uh, I didn't take a lot of combat spells, but I still took a few because my general thought process was if I only had two levels of Barbarian, I'm only going to be raging a couple times a day. So there will be times when I probably want to cast stuff in combat that I just won't be raging for. But that really didn't end up happening very often. And so I probably could have just gone like all utility spells for the most part and probably would have been better off. But anyways, I, uh, for, for the Fiend, or sorry, for Warlock, I ended up going Pact of the Fiend. And eventually the campaign, I mean, technically got to 13, but really we got to 12, the campaign ended, and we just went to 13, and then never, you know, the campaign was already over, right? Um, so I ended up going Pact to the Fiend, mostly because um, even though I really love Hexblade, a lot of the armor and weapon choices Barbarian was already providing, so Hexblade didn't offer as much there, and because in order to use Reckless Attack, you need to be using Strength, getting to attack with Charisma wasn't really going to be any sort of a win either. So I want a Fiend because every time you get a Killing Blow as a Fiend in combat, you get temporary hit points. And then combined with the Barbarian Rages, and now you're taking half damage, those temporary hit points go longer. I thought this would be a really strong combo. And it was quite effective, but I think that part of, like it probably would have been even more effective in a different party party I was in we also had a Twilight Domain Cleric and so some fights she'd be like just giving everybody temporary hit points like every round so I didn't really um, get to use that as much as I was hoping. Um, the main interactions I was looking for and there was a couple I know already some of you are probably if you haven't watched my previous video you're like okay barbarians can't cast spells while raging they can't concentrate on spells while raging so what's the point of barbarian warlock right but if you go Pact of the Blade, you can get extra attack as a Warlock, which is quite nice. You can also get Eldritch Smite, and of course, Armor of Agathis, which is a great spell. And then, that was kind of the main interactions I was looking for. I wanted to Rage, use my Armor of Agathis, because I'm only taking half damage from my Rage, but the Armor of Agathis is still reflecting the full damage based on the level of spell used, right? Um, I'm just getting more out of that spell and uh, it's getting a lot more mileage and doing a lot more damage. And then also um, being able to you know, use your smites during combat if you're raging is all, or your spell slots on smites during combat is also pretty great. It's not quite as good as Paladin smites, but you know, it's up there. And you're a full caster, not a half caster like you'd be with the Paladin. So overall, I thought that it performed extremely well in combat. Uh, we did have a few things that kind of went my way. Um, Originally, I was going to go with a variant human because I wanted to start with the polearm mastery feat. But as it turned out, usually we go like point by or standard array. But for this campaign, the DM actually let us roll for stats. And I got really lucky and had an 18 to start with. So I decided to go with custom lineage instead, put plus two into my strength, and started with 20 strength. Which normally is something you're not going to have. You're looking at usually like a plus three bonus. I had a plus five. So that was pretty big. Uh, it meant that I was also able to add Great Weapon Master a lot sooner. I find that Great Weapon Mastery, as, as great as that feat is, it is very hard to use it at low levels because the minus five hit penalty 
just prevents you from landing too many hits, I find. Especially if you only have, like, say, a plus three strength bonus, plus two proficiency bonus. You're attacking at a plus zero, you know? So even to hit a 13 or 14 armor class is not easy. And even with reckless attack, that's not by any means a guarantee. Whereas by starting with polearm mastery, this gives me a bonus action attack any round I want, essentially. It gives me a reaction attack, potentially. And I found that was a nice way to boost my damage. And then I could just use my reckless attacks to try to land those hits more. And then as I started getting, you know, better proficiency bonuses, a magic weapon, etc., then it becomes a lot easier to land those big great weapon mastery hits because that minus five penalty is a lot easier to overcome. So that was one of the decisions I made, was to start with Polar Mastery first, not Great with Mastery, but I added Great with Mastery at level four Warlocks, so level six overall. I probably would have just gone for a Strength Boost at that point if I hadn't started with 20 Strength. So I was probably quite fortunate in that regard, but that was kind of the plan there. Um, unarmored Defense was one of the other things I got from Barbarian. I like Unarmored Defense at really low levels. I find it's kind of helpful. But once you've got enough money to afford things like half plate armor and stuff, then it becomes a lot less valuable. And that's kind of how it went with this campaign too. It was good for a few levels, you know, so I made use of it while I could. And then once I kind of move beyond it, then we don't worry about it anymore. Uh, Reckless Attack, of course, is always great. Dark One's Blessing, I already mentioned that. That's temporary hit points whenever you get a killing blow. Uh, obviously, I went Pack the Blade. Um, I also got Dark One's own luck at, at Warlock 6, which gives you, um, you know, a nice boost to like a saving throw and stuff. I quite like that ability. I think it's pretty strong. I hate failing saving throws, especially ones that are going to take me out of the combat. So being able to add a large bonus to your saving throw is pretty good. And then finally at level 10, like Warlock 10, I got Phoenix Resilience, which gives you uh, resistance to one damage type of your choosing, and then you can switch it out whenever you finish a long rest. And I ended up going with fire because we were doing Descent to Avernus and we were in the Nine Hells. So, you know, there's a lot of things doing fire damage down there. Um, and of course, I already had resistance while raging to, you know, blunt piercing and slashing damage. Um, as far as my Eldritch Invocations, so originally I started out with Devil Sight and with Agonizing Blast, but I knew I wasn't going to be keeping Agonizing Blast for long. It's just... It's pretty nice at low levels, and especially like, I kind of had that stage at like level five and six when I was only Warlock three and four, and I didn't have extra attack yet, you know? So the fighter's making two attacks around, plus he was, he was using two weapon fighting, so he had a bonus action attack as well. So he's really making three attacks around, and I've got my one attack and then my bonus action attack. So there were times when being able to like Eldritch Blast, something was pretty nice. I also had Green Flame Blade, which, you know, again, you can't use that while raging either. But, there, you know, you've only got two rages a day. So I found Green Flame Blade and Eldritch plus Agonizing. Both had, like, a kind of nice little window at that, like, level five point when your cantrips scale up because I didn't have extra attack yet. But once I got to Warlock five and had extra attack, I dropped Agonizing Blast entirely. So what I ended up with was um, Devil Sight. Thirsting Blade, of course, extra attack. Elder Smite. Uh, Beguiling Influence, giving me um, proficiency on persuasion and deception rolls. And then, of course, I, I finally took Fiendish Resistance, which gives me freedom of movement, essentially. So that way I don't get caught in like web spells and stuff like that. So those were the ones I ended up with. Uh, as far as my spell selection, the spell selection did change quite a bit over time because as I leveled up, I dropped a lot of the lower level spells. But for cantrips, I ended up with Ag or sorry, with Elder's Blast, Green Flame Blade, and Preston Digitation. None of those were bad, I didn't think. Like I said, there was a window where uh, the first two were actually pretty nice to have. I didn't use them every round because sometimes I wanted to rage instead. But you know, when you when you've only got two rages per long rest, you're not using them in every fight sometimes. So you know, whatever. Uh, first of all, spells. Um, I had a few different ones, but it. The only one that I stuck with the whole time was Armor of Agathis because that was one of the key interactions I was looking to make advantage of, right? Uh, level two spells, Mirror Image and Misty Step. Mirror Image I only cast once, but it does not require concentration, so I think that was still a decent choice. 
Misty Step, I don't think I ever used, but it's a decent spell, so, you know, I'm not saying it was a bad one to have. Third level spells, Counter Spell, which I only cast one time, I believe, and I specifically did not rage because I knew I might need Counter Spells in that fight. And uh, I also took Fly, which ended up being a great spell, you know, lots of utility. It was very handy on multiple times throughout the campaign. I also took the Summon Shadow Spawn because I thought I might want to have like a summon spell, but I actually never cast it ever in the campaign. I probably should have though, because I do think that um, the damage from it probably would have been more useful than, you know, an extra couple of points of damage from Raging. Um, maybe not if I'm trying to stay alive though, but either way, I feel like it's a decent spell, I just never used it. Fourth level, I had Shadow of Moil, Sickening Radiance, another spell I never ever cast. I like the spell a lot, so I find myself taking it sometimes, but, you know, like I said, I wasn't casting spells in combat, really, so that was a bad choice, probably. I also took Dimension, Dimension Door, which was actually a very good choice. It allowed us to, like, circumnavigate uh, part of the dungeon. There was, like, this space that we could see through, but it was pretty much indestructible and you couldn't get through. But I just started just Dimension Dooring people, and because my spell slots come back on a short rest, we just kind of, like, hid short rest. I'd, like, Dimension Door back again with another person, and then back and we short rest, and that dimension door back with another person back, and it got the entire party through there in like five or six hours instead of fighting our way through the whole dungeon. So that was actually pretty handy. Um, fifth old spells, I had Contact Other Plane and Teleportation Circle. Again, I tried to take spells that were not gonna be combat related, but I never cast either one of those ever, unfortunately. And then at the very end, never got to cast it either, but I finally got my one and only sixth level Mystic Arcanum, and I took Mass Suggestion. Um, overall, I thought the character performed extremely well. It was a lot of fun to play. I did want to mention a couple uh, funny things with Armor of Agathis, and uh, this will be spoilers, so you know if you're not interested in the spoilers for the campaign, just ignore this section. You can just skip ahead like uh, a minute and a half. It's probably a good guess. But anyways, um, when we were at lower levels, we only had second level spell slots, or I only had second level spell slots, I should say. So I only had 10 points of armor. But I ended up raging in a fight, and we were fighting with some like really weak devils, I think. And they all killed themselves on Armor of Agathis because they had less than 10 hit points. Or I think they had 13, but they'd taken some damage from one of the clerics, is what happened, I think. He AoE'd them. And uh, so they all killed themselves on the armor. And because I was raging, I took like five damage from one hit, which ended up being two. 7 from the next, which was 3, 6 from the next, which was also 3, and then I still had 2 points of armor left and everything was dead. Uh, and then towards the end of the campaign we were in like a dream sequence and we fought uh, Yognu, the Demon Lord of Knowles, along with a bunch of other stuff. He kind of showed up mid-fight, so everybody's kind of everywhere, we're all fighting these different things. People just left me fighting like all these Knowles, so I'm like killing these Knowles on my turn. and. Uh, you know, they're attacking everything else, right? And then everybody else just kind of like leaves me with the gnolls. And Yogni shows up, and the fighter, well, the, uh, my friend Troy was playing a Fighter 5, Rogue 3, Paladin 2, Bard 1, I believe is what he was. And it was based off the character he was going to play for that great charisma challenge that I got uh, given them, right? So. He ended up taking Eldritch Knight though and Arcane Trickster just because he needed more spellcasting uh, slots for, for his smites. But he ended up, I think he crit Yogni twice in the first round and he action surged and he smite, he dropped smites on every single hit. And he did a truckload of damage. I think about 200 points of damage actually. It was just insane. But then Yogni um, put him in the dirt in a single round of combat. I believe he also crit. And then Troy failed his saving throw against Paralysis, failed his saving throw against Confusion, and just got like beat to death in a single round of combat. Fortunately though, like I said, we did have two clerics. So the first cleric decided, of course, to uh, spiritual weapon, Yogni, for like seven damage, rather than healing the fighter who just did 200 damage in a single round of combat. Fortunately, the other cleric decided to cast heal on him, so we got him back up into the fight. But the funny part was, I've got these gnolls on me, and I'm just like, well, I'm just going to like run away from the gnolls and go fight the demon lord here, because that's the big threat. So the, the DM's like, well, you're going to have to give up like three opportunity attacks. I'm like, 
whatever, do what I gotta do, right? And I am raging, because I've already been in combat with the Knowles. I had Armor Vagathus pre-cast already, you know? So I'm in a pretty good situation there. But yeah, so all three of the Knowles hit me, because I was using a Reckless Attack on my turn. So all three hit me. Turns out that uh, because the Armor of Agathis was cast at the fifth of a spell slot, it did 25 damage to each of the gnolls that hit me, which was all three. They only had 22 hit points. So all three killed themselves on Armor of Agathis, and they were actually at full health. They weren't even wounded at that point. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. I've never killed three things in a single round of combat with them killing themselves on me through opportunity attacks. That was unique. And uh, I quite enjoyed it, honestly. Uh, and then I got the Killing Blue on Yogni too, so all good there. Anyways, enough of the spoilers. Um, so, like I said, I thought the character performed really well in combat, but I thought that thanks to the spell casting and having things like, you know, I had proficiency with persuasion and deception checks. Because my charisma wasn't maxed, I wasn't as good at them as, say, the fighter, who, because he was also a bard and a rogue, uh, had expertise on persuasion. And he had maxed his charisma. So he was usually like the party face. But because I had the skills, I could still sometimes use the assist, uh, the help action to assist him and then give him advantage. So I felt like I was able to contribute in that pillar. And if I did have to make those kind of checks, at least I wasn't terrible at them. I had, you know, I still had decent charisma and I was proficient. So I was decent in the social pillar. I had some decent utility for outside of combat, especially fly was a spell I ended up using quite a bit. And then he was really good in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So overall, I thought it was a very solid character. Um, again, not the strongest multi-class ever available. There are better. But it was great. It was exactly what I was looking for. The character was a lot of fun. I just played him like a complete idiot, because that's how I like to play Barbarians. He was very superstitious and was afraid of magic, including his own. But, you know, you do what you gotta do. The only way to fight magic is with magic sometimes, right? That's what we learned here. So, uh... He was a fun character though, and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, my next video is probably going to be the Bard Multiclassing Tier video. I'm also planning on making like a review of Wheel of Time Season 1, so not really D&D related. But the season was terrible, and diverged from the books a lot. And I thought there might be some good Dungeon Master lessons there. When you start like changing the lore, it makes your story inconsistent and things kind of fall apart. And I think that's a good lesson for DMs to learn to uh, not do. So I'm planning on doing a video about that. I realize the season's been over for a couple of weeks now. So, you know, it's not super timely or anything, but that's okay. You know, it's just giving me a chance to vent a little bit. But anyways, that's everything. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell for notifications. And uh, I'm excited we've got a new year here. Hopefully the channel will continue to grow. I've been sick lately. We've had holidays and I've had phone troubles. My camera keeps dying. So there have been some difficulties here, but hopefully everything's all straightened out. And uh, going forward, this will be like my best year ever, I'm hoping. So I've lost none of the passion, that is for sure. So anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.